Hey folks, Joseph Isabori here. Already with Halloween coming up with another movie review. This time it's a film that came out on August 2nd, 1985, celebrating its 30th anniversary. Yep, I'm talking about the horror comedy Fright Night. A movie about a teenager who is obsessed with horror films. Yeah, he watches late night television. You know, called Fright Night, you know, featuring the movie Vampire Hunter. And then he discovers that their next door neighbor might turn out to be a vampire. Yep. And this one definitely has everything that you would achieve for this horror film. Yes, the special effects were, while it was ahead of its time, it was amazingly awesome. Had tons of gore scenes everywhere. The transformations. All of that just totally works. You can't do films like this nowadays. Because in every film these days, it's just CGI. Yeah. But this movie became so popular out of its $9 million budget, making $24.9 million dollars at the box office. It earned a sequel that came out in 1988 and or 89 depending on which um, overseas you're living in or so. Also they even had an unnecessary remake that came out in 2011 with Colin Farrell and Anton Yelchin. Yeah. And then an in-name only sequel to the remake that came out in 2013 yeah and didn't care for those but I did however care for both the original and its sequel yep because let's face it this is the real deal this is the one I remember watching as a kid and I never forget it now this movie also got released uh, twice on Blu-ray by Twilight Time and sadly I wish I had the Blu-ray already especially that 30th anniversary edition that has extras but oh boy I think it's gonna be a lot possible for me to get it because think of how much money you're gonna spend wasting on by going on eBay and Amazon yeah, because they should be lower instead of higher. Yeah, see, that's another reason why I don't like Twilight Time. Because with their stupid limited editions of 5,000 copies, yeah, it was 3,000 at first, but then they went up to 5,000. Yeah, all sold out too, not to mention. It's enough for us to have a hard time, you know, wasting our money having to buy a copy. And that's just not fair. Especially when we're stuck with the DVD. Transfer's not so bad when it came out, but it is kind of a shame that, that the DVD didn't have as much extras as we were hoping for. Yeah, no kidding. We only had the trailers, and, and that's all we have. It's, we definitely need a new Blu-ray. I just hope Sony would finally get the chance to do so once they expired for Twilight Time. Because we've already got the movie Christine, finally released by Sony, you know, since they've been on Twilight Time for three years. So yeah, they finally got it right this time around. And I hope this time they'll never go out of print. Because we don't want that to happen. Pray to God that Fright Night gets a release by Sony and all the other films too. Because we're going to be stuck for the rest of our lives with a lousy DVD and, and oh boy, I might as well just, you know, tape it on TV, which I did actually. <laughs> I watched it on Encore. Anyway, let's get to the review. It stars Chris Sarandon, yep, who later went on to do The Princess Bride. 
William Brad Still, who went on to do the TV show Herman's Head. Yep, he also did the sequel to Fright Night. Amanda Bierce, who later went on to do the TV series Marable Children. Roddy McDowell from the original Planet of the Apes, and then later Class of 1984. Stephen Jeffries, you know, from the film Fraternity Vacation. Jonathan Stark, Dorothy Fielding, and R.J. Evans. And it's written and directed by Tom Holland. The movie begins when a young teenager named Charlie Brewster, who's played by William Rasdale, is a huge fan of traditional gothic horror films. In fact, he stays up all night watching the horror movie TV series Fright Night, which is hosted by his favorite hero, Peter Vincent. Of course, the name Peter Vincent is named after Peter Cousin and Vincent Price, you know, two horror movie icons. Yeah, you know, legendary ones too. Who's played by Roddy McDowell, who happens to be a former movie vampire hunter for all these vampire movies that he does. So then he discovers that his new next door neighbor, Jerry Dentridge, who's played by Chris Sarandon, might be, as he suspected, a vampire. So he tries to tell his loving mother and Asks his friends for help, but in desperation times, he called the police when he reveals his suspicions to them, only to believe that he has a wild imagination and ignoring his claims. But that particular night, Charlie gets a visit from Jerry, who offers Charlie a choice, something he never thought he would expect it, by saying, Forget about me! And I'll forget about you. So then Charlie's decided to use his crucifix, you know, from the cross, you know, on Jerry, but but of course stops him and slowly tries to push Charlie out the window to his death. Yeah, the ones that has all these uh, tools laying around. So then Charlie stabs Jerry through the hand with a pencil. Very enraged. Jerry has already completely destroyed Charlie's car in retaliation and warns Charlie that he'll plan to do much worse to him later on. So, without any help by everybody, Charlie turns to Peter Vincent, but Peter, of course, dismissed Charlie as being an obsessed fan of his. So then, Charlie's girlfriend, Amy Peterson, who's played by Amanda Bierce, had fear for Charlie's sanity and safeties that he decided to hire Vincent to prove that Jerry is not a vampire. So that means he had to drink what might be holy water. But of course it turned out to be just tap water. So even though Jerry had claimed to Peter that it might be what he is against his religion conventions. But then Vincent discovers Jerry's true nature after glancing at his pocket mirror and noticing Jerry's lack of reflection. He accidentally drops and smashes the mirror, and Peter wants a fleeing, only Jerry learning that the discovery might be finding a piece of, a, of his pocket mirror on the floor. Then Jerry hunts down and turns to Charlie's friend, Evil Ed Thompson, is played by Stephen Jeffries. Ed, of course, then visits Peter and tries to attack him because, unfortunately, you know he is a werewolf, only to be warded off, injured by a crucifix. So then, Jerry chases Charlie and Amy into the club while Charlie tries to call Peter for help. Jerry, of course, hypnotizes and abducts Amy who bears a resemblance to Jerry's lost love. And then his plan was to actually uh, bite uh, Amy and soon become, as we know it, a vampire. Or vampirous <laughs> at this point. So, of course, Peter has to deal with Evil Ed. 
who then refuses, so now he become the target. So Peter did stop him by stabbing him with the stick on Evil Ed, and he transforms and becomes himself, and he's dead, of course. After that, he went to go after Jerry and tries to save Charlie and Amy, who's already become, as we know it, a vampirist, and stopping them all together, as well as going after um, his sidekick before it's too late and that's pretty much what the film's all about and yeah I mean this is a, a very fun movie I always enjoy it I remember watching this on TV when I was a kid I think we rented this on video once or twice but I don't know I, I have seen this a lot and I always enjoy everything that they went into it had a lot of funny dialogue that's just so memorable and and all the other um, a lot of great scenes too that's very frightening you wouldn't believe oh and I, I love the characters too everything from from Charlie Brewster to Peter Vincent as well as um, Jerry Dandridge and Amy Peterson and, and of course um, Evil Ed, too. You know, Edward Thompson. I mean, man, this is such an awesome cast. I mean, they, they really had a lot of fun doing this. I mean, this is just amazing. I mean, one of my favorite scenes is when Charlie and Peter were going to go after Jerry. He was already becoming the vampire as we know it. Yeah, because he was transforming. He was already turning into a vampire bat, and he was ready to attack Peter. And then they even tried to stop him completely by having to break through all the mirrors. Yeah, in order for him to finally melt. Yeah, because you know sunlight can kill him. And they're trying to save uh, Amy from becoming, you know, a vampire. And yeah, I gotta say, it was pretty scary having to see that particular frightening face when she became one. Yeah, that's the one that you saw in the movie posters everywhere. Also, that, that line that Jerry said that I loved too was when he says, Welcome to Fright Night! For real! <laughs> yeah. And, oh man, this is just awesome. Peter, of course, did say... I am Peter Vincent, Vampire Killer. Oh, well. I mean, it, it's just so memorable today. Um, and having to see um, also a Jerry's sidekick, too, you know, when they were about to kill him already. Uh, one of the most frightening scenes was having him actually melt until he became a skeleton once they, they were using the crucifixion. And, and they also were stabbing him completely. Oh wow, you never thought you would see special effects like this again. Because this one was just, oh wow, lots of prosthetic makeup and um, all of that wax and everything they put into the mix. You never thought you would see that. Wow, this is amazing. And Tom Holland did an awesome job writing and directing this awesome film. In fact, this is definitely his best work. You know, after writing, you know, several of the other films before it. This was, of course, his first film that he directed, too. So that's interesting. Because then he later went on to do Child's Play, also with Chris Sarandon. Yeah, but then he plays a different role. One of the best horror comedies ever made. And it still holds up today, without a doubt. Unlike the remake that we had that just doesn't do well for me. I'm sorry, but Colin Farrell is no Chris Sarandon. Yeah, which I know he had a cameo appearance in the remake. and That was like a short cameo. It didn't work. Like, you know, Anton Yelchin, Chris Mintz, Claus, and all the rest of these guys. They, they would never hold a candle to William Rasdale. Amanda Bierce, 
and even Stephen Jeffries. I mean, they never could hold a candle to them. And of course, even Roddy Madow, you know, who's no longer with us, but he's still remembered by this day forward that he was indeed a very good actor playing a former actor who played a the vampire hunter and would soon become the TV host for horror films. So that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, no one can play him better than Roddy McDowell. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah, and I mean, the writing and direction by Tom Howland is what made it up for it. it. It was perfect. It had an awesome soundtrack, too. Yeah, especially the song Fright Night by. Jay Gillis Band, you know, same guys who sing the song Centerfold. Yeah. The music, of course, was composed by Brad Fidel, the same composer who did The Terminator. Yeah. You just can't go wrong with this film. It's perfect. We also had um, a lot of adaptations of, of comic books, video games, novelizations. Yeah. Hell, they even have a documentary about it, too. Definitely check this movie out. Find a DVD copy of this movie if you get a chance. And if you had to take the risk, try to find the Blu-ray that's released by Twilight Time. Even if you had to spin an arm and a leg for it. It won't be easy, but unless you try to find a lower price on eBay and Amazon, um, definitely pick up a copy and, and watch it for yourself. They'll never go wrong with it. Oh, hell, I even get it um, overseas. I mean, they, they do have Blu-rays overseas. You know, they're a lot cheaper than those Twilight Time releases. So then you'll have a chance to see uh, this movie for yourself. Yeah. Just be aware that it doesn't have that many extras, though. But what can you do? So anyway, that's Fright Night, the original film. And I give that... Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.